All right, so Physics 131, this is uh, the third lecture of Chapter 7. We look at torque. So uh, torque is just turning force, right? We've been looking at forces acting on objects. Um, the result of a force is to change the state of motion of an object. Um, but so far, we've been talking about linear motion, right? When I say linear motion, it just means like speeding up, slowing down, changing direction. Um, but there's a special form of force that causes something to turn, and that's called torque. So you can just think of torque as turning force, force that is applied to cause something to change its rotational state of motion. Now, um, look a look at rotational motion is, is in Chapter 9. Um, whether or not we get to that is uh, has yet to be determined. I'll make an announcement as to whether or not we're actually going to cover Chapter 9, uh, given what time we have left. But um, this is an essential application of the idea of force, namely you can apply a force to turn something. And when you do that, uh, you're actually applying a special kind of force called torque. And again, you can just think about it as turning force. So uh, the formula for torque, right? Again, torque is the uh, is what happens when you apply a force to change an object's rotational state of motion. Rotational state of motion. Um, so that would apply to turning a bolt with a wrench. Okay, you're changing the bolts rotational state of motion by applying a force. The formula for torque is this lowercase Greek letter tau, right? That's what that is, equals force times R, which is the torque arm. Now, a torque arm is sometimes referred to as a lever arm, um, but that is just the distance from the axis, from the center of rotation to where the force is applied. Again, the torque arm is just the distance from the center of rotation to where the, the force is applied. So let's look at a picture, right? Um, if we apply a force with our hand, um, again, the force is really right there in the center of our hand. It's applied a certain distance r from the axis of rotation, the center of rotation, okay? If we uh, grip this long handled wrench in the middle, we're applying a certain amount of torque, a certain amount of the product, right, of force multiplied by this R, right, torque arm. We grip the, the end of the long-handled wrench. The torque increases even if we're not actually increasing the force. In all of these cases, we're using the same force, but we increase what's called the torque arm, the lever arm. Again, it's kind of referred to in both of those different ways. Um, and the result is more torque, more turning force, even though you're not actually applying more force. You're still applying more turning force because turning force is the product of two things, the force and the torque arm, okay? If you put a, an extender or just a pipe on the end of this long handled wrench, you can get even more torque out of your force, right? So that's that's what torque is. It's the product of force multiplied by the distance of that force to the center of rotation. Okay. Here's another picture, right? When you press down on a bicycle pedal, the force that's being applied is a, is a certain distance from the center of rotation, sometimes again called the axis of rotation. Uh, but the net torque would be the product of those two. Okay. Now, uh, there's a little bit of a complication. Uh, we need to keep in mind that, okay, uh, what, if, what if we apply this force to the pedal in the vertical position? Zero torque. Why is that? Right? Because just imagine you put the pedal at the top, you press down with your foot, it doesn't turn. Okay? Uh, so as this pedal... Uh, goes up in position towards the vertical, uh, the amount of torque that you are applying goes down until it gets to zero. Because as everybody knows, right, you, if you stand, if you apply a lot of force on a pedal that's right vertically above the axis, it doesn't turn. So what's the added component, the last component? Well, the 
last component of torque, the last concept that we need is the idea that um, the torque arm is actually the perpendicular distance, perpendicular distance between the line of force and the axis of rotation. So that's kind of a complicated concept. What does that mean? It just means if you draw the line of force, okay, draw a line through that red arrow, and then you draw the perpendicular distance between that line of force and the axis of rotation right here, you get this R. So notice this R is actually smaller than the full sprocket radius, the full, not sprocket, I'm sorry, uh, the full arm of the pedal uh, is actually a larger distance than this R in the picture. Why is that? Because torque arm is actually perpendicular distance between the line of force and the axis of rotation. If you go back up here, right, we see, ah, okay, the full um, pedal arm is the perpendicular distance. We draw that line, that line through the force vector as a full distance R from the axis of rotation. These forces are all perpendicular to the um, per perpendicular to the uh, distance already as drawn, so that R is already the perpendicular distance, right? Um, but in this case, the force is not perpendicular to the pedal arm, so we have to draw in the perpendicular distance between that line of force. So that word perpendicular distance, um, that's crucial. Okay. All right. Um, so in most of the situations that we're looking at, force is going to be perpendicular to the R that is given. If you know, if if you have a diagram like this, you realize that the the radius, the R that we're going to use is not the length of the pedal arm. It's the length of this this R, which is the perpendicular distance. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, the, the idea that torque is a vector quantity uh, determined by this sort of right-hand rule uh, is not important <laughs> for our purposes uh, as deep as we're going to go. It actually comes up in Chapter 9. Um, if we skip Chapter 9, then it's not going to be important. So I am, you know, I since it's looking like we're going to skip Chapter 9, don't worry about that. For those classes in case I use this video in the future for those classes where we do look at chapter nine um, we're gonna we're gonna definitely look at the vector nature of torque okay we're gonna talk about that later in a separate video okay so torque is very simple as long as the distance the perpendicular distance between the line of force and the axis of rotation uh, is given you just multiply the force by that distance you get the torque and that's uh, the units of torque are pounds multiplied by um, feet in the British system or newtons multiplied by meters in the metric system. So we have pound feet of torque or newton meters of torque. Okay, so for example, uh, in this case, a uh, force of 10 pounds is applied to the bicycle pedal that we saw above. The length of the pedal arm is 0.85 feet. What torque is applied? You just multiply 10 pounds by 0.85 feet. Okay, you get 8.5 pound feet of torque. Okay, all right. So uh, the problems that I'm going to give you are just very simple applications of that. Uh, I like you know looking at pictures, of course, and all these in these different pictures that you look at, you can see okay the perpendicular distance was given, so no worries, straightforward. All right, that's the lecture for Chapter 7, Section 3, Torque. As always, let me know if you have any questions.